Joining us now is Jason Kim, the CEO of Firefly Aerospace, and we are here in Firefly's Mission Operations Center. Very cool. Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Jason, first let's talk about the historic lunar landing. What an incredible accomplishment, and I've read the longest commercial operations on the moon to date and the first successful commercial moon landing. What was that moment like for you? A uh, proud moment. Uh, you can see the Mission Operations Center. It's empty right now, but I assure you it wasn't during the historic lunar landing. We had uh, a team of 60 fireflies, uh, two shifts going on, so 24-7 operations, and they didn't miss a beat. Everything that they did was like clockwork. Uh, down to the day of the landing, it was actually the 2nd of March, which is historic because it's the Texas State Independence Day. Very cool. Clearly meant to be how fortuitous it was to be on that very day. But speaking of the lunar landing, how much of your business focus is on stuff like that versus satellite support or contracts with the military? We're so diverse at this company and it was deliberate. Uh, Firefly is really good at picking the right market segments. For instance, the Alpha rocket is the only one ton rocket on the market right now. And it's good that we do that because all the small satellites, they're not getting any smaller. They're actually getting bigger. So this one ton market is great. We're gonna take that flight heritage and all the great technologies from that and develop, we are developing our medium launch vehicle and that'll be 16 times more capable in terms of mass to orbit than Alpha. Uh, and then that's gonna launch Constellations, commercial, uh, na national security as well as NASA. So very well diversified there and then further we're diversified in the spacecraft portfolio as well. So we have our lunar landers that we're launching once a year to different parts of the moon that you know sometimes we've never been to. So another historic, uh, besides just being the first commercial to do it and uh, do the surface operations since the Apollo era, we're gonna land on the far side of the moon, we're gonna land in the Grudheisen domes and more. Uh, and then finally, we've got our Electra vehicle, that's the orbiter. That's going to do things for NASA, national security, for commercial missions as well. So just having that diversified portfolio is immensely uh, helpful for our company to grow and continue to do game-changing missions. Clearly, so much on the horizon for you and your team, and it's all very cool to witness. You know, Firefly and yourself, maybe to the general public, is not as well known yet as some of the bigger competitors or the owners like Elon Musk, uh, Jeff Bezos, but your location here in Central Texas, it's growing rapidly and it offers some key advantages. What would you say those are? Well, first of all, Austin is a pretty great town. Uh, it's one of those towns that brings a lot of people to this location all the time, whether to live long term or just check it out. Uh, it's the music capital of the world. Uh, and then it's got great universities all across the state, especially here in Central Texas with University of uh, Texas at Austin and others close by. So the university is great. Uh, there's a lot of talent and we wanna have our sons and daughters uh, have great, reliable, growing companies to work at and Firefly is right here. Uh, accepting candidates for all of our roles at the company as we grow. Uh, instead of them having to go and search for places in the West Coast or East Coast, they could just stay right here, coast, close to family in a great setting. And that means something doubly coming from yourself, a fellow Texan. That's right. So you're, you're giving back to your own community. And the commercial space sector is really having a moment. Besides the business opportunity, what would you say are the broader benefits and the impact of this kind of innovation? You know, I think the commercial industry is just uh, blazing a trail with all the new technology that's out there, both on the satellite side as well as the rocket side. Um, there's just no stopping it you know, because the commercial innovation brings in the latest technologies that you wouldn't have thought of or, you know, traditionally. And I think you're seeing new models like direct to cell phone kind of satellites, constellations out there. Uh, you're seeing more Earth observation satellites, more and more of those populating the space, um, which means you need more uh, small to medium launch vehicle capability because uh, 2027, uh, there's going to be a bottleneck. And so, you know, we're going to have our Alpha line uh, rating up to 
uh, launching 12 times a year, uh, maybe even more. We're going to have a medium launch vehicle that's going to be ready to launch constellations. And so we're going to help with, you know, advancing that commercial technology in space. And speaking of space, having this moment and the future of space exploration, last month, a Blue Origin mission with an all-female crew completed a space trip. It generated so many news headlines and it generated a lot of excitement, but also some critics for the optics of it. And some have since written think pieces and especially younger people have posted on TikTok wondering about the importance of space exploration in today's world when so many things on Earth are happening. Of course, you know, social political unrest, extreme weather events, uh, maybe another pandemic. What do you want to say to young people or anyone who may be feeling that way? Yeah, you know, one thing's for sure, space is bipartisan. Uh, I just got to testify in front of Congress just a month ago. It was in front of, uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans, and they all are for commercial technology and commercial companies like Firefly, leveraging the, te the technologies and applying it to, you know, game-changing science missions just like Blue Ghost 1, where it successfully landed on the moon and did those surface operations. Uh, it's one of those things, space is one of those things that brings everyone together. And, you know, whenever there's a moment to inspire the next generation, uh, I don't know if you knew, but on Blue Ghost 1, our marketing team had this whole campaign to reach out to a hundred different local high schools and across the world and even, and sent out posters that said, dream big, you never know where you're gonna land. And we think that helped inspire so many K through 12 students. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna you know, have people go into space and aerospace and other adjacent industries and uh, really uh, foster more astronauts, uh, fo foster more great new game changing business models in space. And so uh, that mission alone uh, went a long ways towards STEM and educating uh, and inspiring that next generation. And how cool is it for kids to get to see models of rockets and to learn more about this? I know as a kid growing up, going to NASA was such an exciting, exciting thing. And how do you hope your operations here in Central Texas grow? And what do you expect of the growth here in Central Texas? Well, if you've toured our facility, you'll see just the massive scale of our 200 acres and our 250,000 square feet of factory space for both rockets and satellites. And these are 100-foot rockets, 200-foot rockets, reusable rockets, as well as lunar landers and orbiters as well. We're already production hardened. All that is in place. The people are trained and they're building at rate. We're just an execution story where we're just going to continue rating up because there's so much demand for our Alpha rockets, for our medium launch vehicle, for our lunar landers, as well as our orbiters. So we're going to continue increasing our supply and then providing that, you know, great technology to our customer base. And what do you foresee and what do you hope for the future of space exploration? Well, I think that, uh, you know, there's all kinds of new science that we don't understand yet. Uh, for instance, on Blue Ghost 1, uh, I don't think anybody in the world knew what the true temperature readings were going to be in, uh, on the moon's surface. Blue Ghost 1 landed. We landed next to a crater safely, uh, stable and upright. The thing is, is that we expected a certain temperature and we saw a higher temperature. We were still able to withstand you know, those higher temperatures because we had a great design with margins, but it just made me think there's so many geographical futures on the moon that we don't even understand enough about. So in the future, we'd love to map that with higher resolution, higher fidelity, so that when future landers go on the moon, whether it's for human life or robotics, will be ready for any type of temperature swing or anything else that is out there that we don't know about yet. So that's something that's important. Blue Ghost 2 is going to go to the far side of the moon and we're going to be RF dark, radio frequency dark, because the moon itself is going to be a basically a, a, a shield blocking the Earth's noise as well as sometimes the sun's noise, which means it's going to be very quiet, which means we can sense millions of years ago signals that came from the dark ages that are finally getting to us, we'll be able to sense that. And so this, there's just so much, so much game-changing science that we don't know about and we want to do more of.
It's definitely hard to comprehend. I mean, that's why they call space the final frontier for a reason. So much yet to learn and it's so exciting to see all that your company is going to do. Jason Kim, the CEO of Firefly Airspace, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for having us and thanks for highlighting Firefly. Absolutely. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment below to let us know your thoughts on this video. And don't forget you can watch full episodes of Austin Insight for free in the PBS app.